Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 10 of our tile-based top-down shooter. And in this video, we're going to be adding health to our player and our mob sprites. All right, so we have our gun working, and we can shoot the zombies, although hitting them in one shot is a little too powerful. So what we want to do now is we want to add some health to those zombies and make the bullets uh, do a certain amount of damage. Uh, with each hit. So we're going to go over here to oops, to our settings and we're going to add a bullet damage. Let's just keep round numbers. I'm going to make the bullets do 10 points of damage and the mob uh, zombies will have 100 health. Okay. So over here on our uh, class mob They have a health of 100. And now what we can do is every time a bullet hits it, we just want to subtract the bullet damage from the health. And then if the health is ever less than zero, we can put that in the update here. So if that health is less than zero, put less than or equal to zero, sorry then self.kill. Okay, so now we just need to take away some health whenever the bullet hits. Okay, so over here we in the last video added this little group collide between the mobs and the bullets and we are just saying each mob that gets hit just gets killed. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to say hit.health minus equals bullet damage, right? We're just going to take away that amount, and if it gets down to zero, then the mob will uh, will disappear because we already added that in the update. Um, I'm also going to, while I'm here, I'm going to take the velocity of the mob and set it to zero. So when you hit it, it just will stop it slightly, as if the bullet has a little bit of stopping power. Okay, so that should look like this. Okay. I'll get over here so we have some more space. And you can see I'm shooting that one and it disappears. Now, good enough. 10 shots to kill the zombies. But it would be nice if the zombies had some indication of what their health was. right? A little uh, health bar that I could see going down so I know how much damage I'm doing and how close I am to killing the zombie because I might want to run away from it, or I might want to keep shooting it. Okay, so on our mob, we're going to add a new method to our mob. And this is going to be called draw health. And what this is going to do is draw a little colored bar up at the top, or, uh, you know, superimposed on the mob, showing what its health bar is. Now, one thing we want to do is, let's go over here and check our colors. Do we have yep, green, yellow, and red? So it's green when it's full, yellow when it's midway, and red when it starts to get low. So we can see visually uh, how it's changing. So we're going to go over here. And depending, we need to choose a color based on what the health is. If the health is greater than, say, 60%, then the color is going to be green. Okay. If it's not, then we're going to say if it's greater than 30, the color is going to be yellow. And otherwise, the color will be red. Okay. So now we know what color we're going to draw our bar in. Okay. Uh, the width of the bar is just going to be. Um, The width of the bar is going to be whatever the width of our rectangle is, right, times the percentage of the health that's left. So self.health over 100. So if you have 50 health left, it'll be half the width, right? So that's perfect. Okay, and then we need to make a little 
we need to figure out the rectangle that we're going to fill in. So the health bar is going to be a rectangle. And this is the location it's going to be on the sprite image, not on the screen. Okay, it's going to be width wide and uh, let's try this thickness and see what we how we like it. Okay, now I don't want to draw the bar. I only want to draw the bar if it's actually less than 100. So when the mob first spawns and it's at full health, we don't see the bar at all. It'll be once we hit it. So we're just going to draw that rectangle on top of our mob's image in the color. And then we use that uh, health bar rectangle. OK? All right. So now what we can do is go back over here to our main. And in the draw section, right here, we're going through all the sprites and we're drawing them on the screen. Now, only the zombies have a health bar. So I only want to do the draw health on sprites that are zombies. So we're going to use the is instance command to say if the sprite we're looking at is an instance of mob. Okay. If it is a mob, then it's going to have the draw health. So we can say sprite.drawHealth. All right. So let's try that out. All right, let's start shooting. There we go. So we have our nice little health bar uh, going down, turning red, yellow, and then red, and then disappears. Very good. Now we have some nice feedback on our mobs. And now we kind of want to do the same thing on our player which is we want to have the, the mobs damage the player, and we want to have the player have a health bar that we can see going down as well. Although I don't think we want to put the health bar of the player on the player. Uh, we're going to put that up in the corner as a, a heads-up display, um, and uh, we'll be able to see what our health is there. So let's go to our player settings here and add a player health, and we'll just have that start at 100 too easy to use round numbers when you're starting. And it just occurs to me, we forgot to do this, we should have done this with the mob too. Uh, set this as a variable so that it's easy for us to change later because we use that number 100 in a lot of different places, right? So here our mob's health should be set to mob health, right? And when we draw it, um, we care if it's less than whatever the full health is, right? And we want to draw the percentage, right? So that way we know what fraction we have of the, of the health, not have everything locked to 100. Um, OK, so on the player, we're also going to say our health of the player is player health. And we just need to draw it on the screen. We also need to take away some when, when the mobs hit the player. And so hitting the player, uh, we're going to go over to our update section again. And we need to do a collision between the mobs and the player. Okay, So that's going to be mobs hit player. We're going to do another collide. We're going to do a sprite collide between the player, mobs, false. Now, we probably want to use the hit, rectang hit, hit rectangle again, just like we did with the, with the colliding with the walls. Remember, we made the hit rect. So we're going to say uh, collide hit rect here. So that way, when the, if the mobs hit the player's hit rect, not if they hit the bigger outer rectangle of the image. That way it won't look like they got you when they're not actually that close to you. So, all right, so we need to go through. And for each one that hit us, we're going to take our player health 
and we're going to subtract whatever the mob damage is, which we need to set as well. So we're going to go here and we're going to say the mob damage is also 10. Right? Again, I'm just sticking with round numbers to get things working. All that stuff can get adjusted later. So we take away some health from the player. Okay. I'm also going to have the mob stop briefly, just like when it get hit, gets hit with the bullet, like it swiped at you. So it's a little, little pause there. And then we're also going to um, say if the player's health is less than zero, uh, then the game is over. Right? And that'll uh, restart. Okay. Now if we run this, we're going to see we have a couple of problems still. Okay, one is, see I'm dying right away when the mob hits me. Um, so what you would see if we were showing the health bar yet is it would just instantly drop to zero. And the reason for that is that the mob is colliding with the player and taking away, but the next frame it's still colliding. So we're basically permanently colliding so the health gets taken away really fast. So what we need to do is one thing we could do is just say if the player gets hit, okay, if the player gets hit, we're going to push the player back a little bit. We're going to make the mobs knock you back just a little bit, okay? Um, so we want to take the player's velocity, or sorry, the player's position. We're just going to knock him back a little distance. And it's going to be something we'll call knockback. And we're going to rotate that at whatever the uh, mob that hit us, whatever its rotation is. So notice I'm not doing it for each mob that hits. If you get hit with multiple mobs, we're just going to knock you back once because I want you to see how this works. So we need to say uh, mob knockback. And that's just going to be how, what distance it knocks you back. Okay. So watch what happens. So now I get pushed back, which is good, right? But look at that. I get pushed inside the wall. I don't know if you saw that happen. So when I get hit, just be because I just move, I get pushed inside the wall. And we don't want that. The reason that I'm going inside the wall has to do with our collide with walls function here. Our collide with walls function only moves you and puts you against the side of a wall if you're moving because we were using the velocity. We were saying if you were moving to the left or you're moving to the right. Well, that's a problem now because we're hitting a wall without moving. So we're going to change this. And all I really needed to do is instead of checking to see if I was moving to the right, I'm just going to say check to see if the wall's center is greater than the player's center, right? So if the player's center is greater than the wall's center, then I'm on the right-hand side of the wall, right? And then same thing here in this direction, we're just going to say if the center x is less than the, the player's center x, then we must be on the left-hand side of the wall, so we go against the right. Same idea in this one. We're going to say if the center y right, is greater than that. Oops. So if the player's the center of the player's rectangle is greater than, then we must be underneath, right? So the Y gets put there, and then the last one is this one. If the center Y is less than. Okay, so that should fix our wall collision problem. So now when I get pushed back, I'm going to get against the wall there, right? And so if you get trapped in a corner, you're going to have a problem, right? Because you can't get pushed any further. So you definitely don't want to get trapped in a corner.
Okay, and let's wrap this up by drawing the player health on the screen so we can see it. Now, I'm just going to add this to the top here. Um, right now, we only have, for our HUD, our heads-up display, uh, we only have the player health. But eventually, we're going to have more, and we'll probably move these to a separate file. But for right now, since there's just one, uh, I'm going to put it here. So I'm just going to define a, a function called draw player health. Okay, And what we pass to it is um, what surface we want to draw on, the X and Y where we want to draw it, and the percentage of health uh, so we know how big to fill the bar. Okay, And just in case we ever pass it a negative value, then we will pin it at zero. And now we need to do the size. I'm just going to make the variables here real quick because, again, I just want to see how it looks. So we're going to make the bar be 100 pixels wide, and we'll make it be 20 pixels tall. OK, so the amount that's filled is the percentage times the bar, bar length. Right? That's going to be how much of it we fill in. And we need two rectangles. Okay, We need the outline. We're just going to draw an outline of this box. It's going to be a rectangle at x and y. And the length will be bar length. And the height will be bar height. And then the filled rectangle that's going to go inside it is also going to be at x, y. But its width is going to be that fill amount that we just calculated. And the height can also be bar height. Now, just like the when we did it with the zombie, we want to figure out what color. So if, we're, uh, if our percentage is greater than 60%, then the color is going to be green. Um, and if it's greater than 0 0.3, color equals yellow, and otherwise color equals red. And then we just need to draw it. So we're just going to draw a rect on the surface we said in the color we said using the fill rect. And then we're going to draw the outline on the surface. I'm going to use white outline rect, two pixels thick. Okay, so there's our little HUD, and then we'll go down to our draw section and just put it there right before we flip the display, right? I'm going to label this here, HUD. Okay, so we're just going to say draw player health self.screen uh, where do we want to put it? I think I want to put it in the upper left-hand corner. So that means that uh, I'm going to put it at 10, 10. And the percentage is going to be whatever the player's health is divided by the uh, total player health. Okay. Let's take a look at that. There's our bar. And I'll let myself get hit, and you can see it going down, getting mobbed by zombies. Ah, okay. Cool. Our game is dangerous now. All right, well, that was another fairly long video, pushing 20 minutes. Uh, let me know in the comments below if that's a problem for you, um, if you like the shorter length, or if you're cool with... Uh, with these pushing uh, pushing 20 minutes. With some of the more advanced stuff we're going to start doing as we progress with this game, some things are going to start taking a little bit longer to explain and to implement, and I don't want to break features up in the middle and continue them on separate videos. I like to keep at least each video being one, adding one thing to the game or one, uh, one new feature. As always, please hit the like button Below. And if you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, post them in the section below. And I will see you in the next video.